Good morning. Pastor Nancy Brody here again, welcoming you to Sunday worship. Thank you to Nancy Shump, uh, Stone Road for putting some beautiful lilacs on our altar. I wish you could be here to smell the beautiful fragrance that they're filling the church with. Um, an update on Charles Funk. Um, he is now on hospice, and uh, Alice says that hospice of Central PA has been a real godsend. She says, we continue to find great comfort in the love and prayers of family and friends. We appreciate the phone calls, texts, emails, and food. We are feeling truly blessed. This week, if you don't know, Darla Smith's youngest sister, Wendy Walter, passed away on Friday. Please keep her family in your prayers. And we just found out that Brian Willier has gone to the hospital. And um, I got to know Brian oh, playing uh, dart ball as I cheer on the team. He and I have sat together and spoken many times. So please pray for Brian Willier in the hospital. I would ask you um, to please do me a favor. Put, your, put my cell phone number in your phone. It is 443-974-5555. If you have someone that you love and care for that is in need of prayer or goes to the hospital or have any family member pass away, please text me. I know that you're in the habit of texting Greta and that's fine too, but I do need to know things as they happen. So please put my number in your phones. Dave, do we have any other announcements or prayer requests that came through via Facebook this morning? We have 28 people logged on, and the prayer requests that have been shared are things you've just already mentioned, so okay. nothing new to add. Okay, and um, prayer is a powerful, powerful gift of God. It's for our benefit. It's not to inform God of anything that's going on, but please, I invite you to use it and um, look at your newsletter that you should have received this week, and you'll find an updated prayer list there. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. I invite you to make the sign of the cross with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ 
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. Here ends the first reading. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He, he makes, makes me lie down in green, green pastures and leads, leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though, Though I, I walk, walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, of death I, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? 
But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends our second lesson. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd like to invite the children to come to the screen, please. Good morning. We were just reading about Jesus saying he was a gate. And I thought, what kind of a gate do you guys know about? And I thought of a baby gate. I bet you had a baby gate in your house. And you might even remember it. Sometimes we put baby gates at the top of stairs or at the bottom of stairs to keep children safe from climbing and falling. Or a gate can keep you in a safe area. When I was a little child, they had things called playpens. And they were just a small square that babies could crawl around in. But we'd go in circles all the time and we wouldn't have anywhere to go. We were kind of stuck. But you guys get to have baby gates, and you might have had a whole safe space for you to play in. Gates keep us safe by keeping us in, and they also keep us safe by keeping things out. So you might have baby gates at your house used to keep the dog out of the dining room when you're having dinner, or out of the kitchen when you're preparing food. A friend of mine lost a whole pot roast to her dog because he got up on the counter, and she never thought she would. So Jesus is a gate for us. And when we're little, we have things like baby gates. And as we grow older, Jesus becomes a gate of a different kind, still protecting us. Let's pray. And I'm sorry I can't ask you questions, and you can't answer me, because I'd love to hear your answers. All right, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for all the ways that you protect us and keep us safe. Thank you for being our shepherd 
and for giving us other shepherds in our lives, like our parents, our brothers and sisters, our sitters, our teachers, and other relatives and friends. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thanks. I did want to make a note that since we had read about Jesus calling us by name, during our prayers of intercession, we will be naming everyone by their first name. So I just wanted to prepare you for that. In, one of, in our first reading, we heard in Acts about the community of Christians and how they shared everything and held everything in common and proceeded to give to all as they had need. And that's kind of like an ideal, right? They're not even sure that that Christian community ever really existed, and that was a description of what really was, but it certainly was an ideal. So today I want to let you peek inside your pastor's mind. And the goal is to demonstrate how the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, can resonate within real relationships, and how Ideals may not be our reality, but nonetheless, they're things to strive for at the same time that we accept what we have. <clears throat> In this world, we don't always end up having the relationships we hoped for. Mothers, fathers, spouses, siblings, children, friends, and employers often disappoint us. Somehow, aunts, uncles, and grandparents seem to do a lot better. I'm not sure why, but I guess we can figure that out. So as special days approach, when we're going to want to remember people, is there any one of us who hasn't felt anxious standing before multiple rows of sentimental greeting cards? We try to pick the quote-unquote right one. But compared to ideals put forth by card designers, the shortcomings of our real human beings become apparent. I, like probably many of you, was led to believe that relationships where people are near perfect must really exist. I've been in churches where Christian community ideals were really almost required, and that was very difficult and unreal. We struggle to find greeting cards that accurately reflect real relationships. The pressure of matching the outside images with the card's verses is more than we care to deal with. So we settle for less than half truths or ask our spouses to select one, make our own or skip sending a card altogether. Can any of you relate? No, we don't always get the relationships we want. But in the words of Mick Jagger, you just might find. You just might find you get what you need. And sheep need shepherds, like children need parents. You may be thinking, well, I got neither the parents I wanted nor needed. And if that's true for you, I'm truly sorry. When I was very young, but old enough to compare my family to others, I remember thinking how lucky I was. And as I got older, like many teens, I fantasized about the day I would gain my total independence. And what I realized over the years is that no one thrives in that state. Every one of us needs to belong or else to some degree we are lost. I grew up close to each of my parents. In fact, it's a little embarrassing to think that I kissed both of them goodnight well into my teenage years. But the older I got, the more things became complicated. Mom always wanted closeness, and we had our times of distancing, but then she died. Dad took a firm stand on everything, and his distance often meant disapproval. Mom gave unconditional love, 
dad protective love. And both tried to control many aspects of my life. So which one portrayed the Good Shepherd? Well, what happened recently provided a clue. It was three weeks since I'd heard my father's voice. There have been times where we chose not to speak for years, so that in and of itself wasn't a huge deal. But as you might know, he's 90 now, and we've been rather close and steady for 10 years. The thing that made it hard was the fact that among the three most important people in his life, me being one of them, two of the three were speaking with him. And while they generously shared the core contents of their private conversations with me, I couldn't help wonder why I could never get through. I tried different days and times of day without success. I made up my mind not to compete for his affection or overtax his energy on the weekends when they would call. Remembering my father and mine off again and on again relationship didn't help. We distanced ourselves when interests conflicted or either one needed protective space. And needless to say, any time we distance ourselves there is a kind of loss, at the very least, a break. So when I finally got through, he uttered the familiar words, who's this? I said, Nancy. He said, who? I said, Nancy, your daughter. The seconds passed palpably. I prepared myself and expected displeasure for us not having spoken on Easter day. He said in a weaker voice, who? Then I heard him speak to the person taking away his meal tray who had answered the phone. His voice was weaker still. I don't know who's trying to call me. I repeated even louder, it's Nancy, your daughter. I'll never forget what came next. I could measure it by volume and tone. The voice at the other end asked, Nancy, is this Nancy? Yes, Dad, it's Nancy. Oh, Nancy, he said. And at that moment, I heard my shepherd's voice. I felt joy and peace beyond understanding. I felt what Mary must have felt when Jesus' voice broke through her sad tears as she paced near his tomb. I felt the freedom Lazarus must have felt when he realized that what previously bound him and kept him lying low was coming undone. I felt what any scared or lonely living thing ever felt the moment it reconnected to something that made it feel safe. Stop for a moment and think of one voice that's able to call your name and make you feel better. Who brought or brings you that kind of joy or peace. In that moment, you heard or hear your shepherd's voice. Like the voice of Jesus, other voices call you. What might they be calling you to? To memories or a future? I think both. As your pastor, I'd like to call you right now into a moment of rebirth or renewal. I'd like to ask you to commit or recommit 
to a state of belonging. I know we're so good at self-sufficiency, and like teenagers, many of us still strive for total independence, financially or emotionally. This summer, four confirmands will become members of the church by affirming their vows of baptism. They need your belonging. They need your involvement in order to understand why church membership matters. And if you or someone you love is not yet a member, please consider, consider joining this summer. Why is belonging important? Because belonging is where we find protection. Belonging is where we find voices who care, where we find what we need. A chief shepherd in Jesus and an under-shepherd in your minister. Pastors and deacons are not just called by the church, but by the Holy Spirit. They follow the voice of the chief, chief, chief ooh, that's a tongue twister, of the chief shepherd. When you belong, you are part of a flock. You are given a safe space that offers good food and beverages. Belonging teaches, offers new ways to play, and have more satisfying relationships. You might find that even buying greeting cards won't be so stressful if you belong to a church. You have to pop. Pardon me, I have to get my Kleenex. If you stop and think about it like a shepherd, God has protected you. Especially when you were too young, too naive, or too bold to think you were in danger. As a child, when I opened my car door on a city street, I was nearly sideswiped. I didn't even know I'd been threatened until my father yelled at the driver for nearly hitting me. But I knew in that moment of his protection. As a shepherd, he raised his staff and held it out in an attempt to put a predator off balance. But what about when predators succeed? In John 10, 15, Jesus says he's the good shepherd willing to lay down his life for his sheep. And I have to wonder, what good will that do? unless he successfully defeats the enemy and saves every sheep. And that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. But what about when predators succeed? For myself, I find answers by being obsessed with crime investigations. When mysteries unravel and guilty parties are caught, forensic evidence proves that somebody, like a shepherd, does look out for victims. While I compare their circumstances to my own, I take comfort in the vast differences between us. However, when it comes to the vulnerability of young women, I think how very similar our paths were. I, too, traveled alone at night, hitchhiked occasionally by day, and partied with strangers. Why was I so lucky to remain unharmed? Although their deaths weren't prevented, detectives and concerned citizens like good shepherds look out for their interests even after the fact. A shepherd, like a good citizen, uses their voice to be of help. Jesus calls his sheep by name and leads them. When he is brought out all, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow because they know the voice and they will not follow a stranger. 
but run away because they do not know the stranger's voice. Steve and I find ourselves watching a lot of zoo shows, and the animals often have to get into crates to travel or get treatment. To train them, they are lured by food to touch their nose to a target. But works, what works really well is the encouragement of a familiar voice. The wild animals comply. And strangely enough, the animals least likely to comply are not the wildest, but the tamest. We, like the sheep and the goats from the petting zoo within the zoo, prove most difficult to attract, to touch, to teach. So civil institutions end up using the European method of shepherding. They use a virtual sheepdog to nip at people's ankles. They represent a threat and make use of our basic fear instinct. They drive their charges by force. In contrast, Jesus uses a different method. He affectionately, intimately draws his sheep forward. He works hard to establish and maintain a familiar, trusting relationship. He leads. He makes us lie down in green pastures because otherwise we're like animals who will just constantly eat up whatever's ahead keeping our heads down until we fall off a cliff. Even when we almost kill ourselves and our relationships, Jesus brings us back to life. In the midst of every fear and threat, even death, God is in person and with us, leading and loving, always and forever. All the elements of a happy life we heard listed in Psalm 21. I ask what your happy elements are. Are they things that God wants to provide or things that you might be embarrassed to pray for? But whatever they are, Talk to God about them. Say, I'm sorry, Lord, but I still want to go where I might do harm or where I might hurt somebody. I do wish for things that I know aren't good for me or my family. I don't want to belong or give up my independence. I don't. My prayer for you is that you find kindness, mercy, and goodness all the days of your life. And when your life is over, I hope to pray words like these over you. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him or her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Believe belong, be blessed. Amen.
tender care in your pleasant pastures feed us for our use your home prepare blessed jesus blessed jesus you have brought Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you brought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful we be blessed to relieve us grace to cleanse and power to free blessed Jesus blessed Jesus early let us turn to you blessed Jesus blessed Jesus Early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor. Early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for us and, and for our salvation, salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, look for the for resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. And please sign into Facebook if you haven't already, so we know you're there. Peace be with you.
to me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, guide education to complement ministries of the church. Let the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and volunteers bear long-lasting fruit. Transform colleges, seminaries, and all sites of learning so more, per more persons have access. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creating God, protect those who maintain and operate farm equipment, who plant, spray, and harvest, tend living creatures, process and transport food, make agriculture uh, sustainable, and prosper those who labor. Strengthen their hands, legs, and backs, Give weary workers rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guiding God, meet the needs of those in want. Turn nations to righteousness and authorities to your ways. Let leaders speak trustworthily and listen with care to the sound of their sheep. Create space for all God's children to live abundantly without fear. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comforting God, nurture us tenderly and, care, and carry us to safety. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering, especially Brian, Pastor Jay and Mary, Mark, Amy, Bob and Elaine, Mike, Randy, Terry and Connie, Randy, Luann, Rhonda, Kira, Daryl, Nancy and Brad, Larry and Barbara, Mary, Randy, Larry Jr., Charles and Linda, Rufus, Vicki, Jean, Marlene, Doreen and Darlene, Ron Jr., Steve, June, Molly, Ellen, Kathy, Grant, Bob and Deb, June, Shirley, Ruth, Irene, Shirley, Blanche, Loretta, Treasure, Miriam, Kathy, Caitlin, Grayson, Jody, Katie, Judy, Stevie, Lori, Charles, Kathy, Hannah, Grace, Mary Lou, Glenn, and also those in our serving in the military, Matthew, Dylan, and Nicholas. We pray for those who don't recognize your voice, who are lost, struggling in the wilderness, trapped in cycles of abuse, violence, addiction, or crime. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, help those closed in by the walls of homes, hospitals, shelters, camps and prisons, find comfort in their surroundings. Give them enough protective gear and equipment. Make tests, treatment, and vaccinations available soon. Teach us how to live in a biodiverse world without inviting disaster. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, open the spiritual senses of all persons facing death, especially the friends and family of Charles Funk, and grieving loss, especially the family and friends of Wendy Walter. May they feel beloved and hear your voice as you call and guide them to your side. Help them make amends if possible. Help each and every life to be lived satisfactorily. So upon review, it becomes a clear demonstration of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray and all of our concerns into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank you for joining us.